aeration may dry our compost. It dries faster when we compost high energy waste like food scraps. The air requirement for heat removal is five to ten times higher than the air requirement to meet the oxygen requirements of the microbes. When air moves through the pile, moisture moves with it. There are four principles to consider. First, food waste contains a lot of energy and it's readily available, much different than yard waste or carbonaceous agricultural waste that contain lignin. Depending on how the food scraps are prepared, much of the energy is readily available for the microbes. Second, when aerobic microbes decompose this readily available carbon, heat is produced. A mixed food and yard waste may contain 10 to 20,000 kilojoules of heat energy per kilogram. This heat must go somewhere. A kilo of water requires only 4.18 kilojoules of energy to increase temperature by 1 degree Celsius, so it can only absorb a small amount of the heat energy produced. Thirdly, the psychometric curve informs us that air holds much more water as the temperature increases. We can see that air at 60 degrees Celsius and 100% humidity holds 25 times more water than air at 10 degrees Celsius and 75% humidity. This means that as soon as there is air movement in the compost pile, moisture moves with it. Fourth, air becomes lighter as temperature increases. It also becomes lighter with increasing humidity. This means that the hot, moist air inside the compost pile is going to move upward. When we optimize microbial activity during composting of food waste, we will lose water. I composted a blend of more than 50% food waste together with wood chips. The starting moisture content was 65% and a pH of 4. After one week, the material at the bottom was 24% moisture. After two weeks, the compost was dry and a pH of 8. It was full of actinobacter and it looked and smelled good. When I added water and mixed it, it exceeded maturity guidelines after five weeks. To achieve this speed of maturity, the food waste needs to be size reduced and thoroughly blended with the bulking agent to optimize microbial activity, which occurs on the surface of the particles. Now, if I don't want the compost containing food waste or other high energy waste to dry so quickly, I do it at the expense of optimizing microbial activity. It's a tricky balance, because I prefer not to mix the compost in the first week or two. I want to provide enough air to change the microbial community, increase the pH and have the smelly compounds removed. After that, I need to mix it, and I need to add moisture to keep the microbes happy and create a mature compost. Yes, it's tempting to aerate less so the material doesn't dry out as fast. It's tempting to provide just enough oxygen for the microbes and maintain temperature to convince ourselves that we are optimizing the process. This may work for some wastes, but with food waste, the risk is a lower pH, increased odor potential, and a longer processing time. We have a choice. My name is John Paul. I'm a soil scientist and waste management specialist. Thank you.